Alrighty, I just wanted to go over a few more focus modes to further explain how the uh, Sony RX10 Mark IV works and just the pure power of this uh, amazing camera. So, uh, first thing I wanted to start with was pre-AF, and right now I have pre-AF enabled. All right, so basically without holding the shutter down, if I move the focus point, which is set to the center of the camera right now, you could see it's automatically focusing. You see that? That's pre-AF, so I'm not hitting the shutter button. I can also hit the shutter button and it'll lock and give me the green confirmation, but I'm not doing that. It's, it's adjusting automatically, and that's pre-AF. So let me show you how you can turn that on and off. It's right here in the menu. It's on page 5 of 14 in camera 1. And I'll just turn it off here to show you how it behaves when it's off. So now, when I move the focus point, it does not focus. See that? I have to actually press the shutter button to lock it. And then when I move it back to the bolt, it's not doing anything. So this will save you some battery life and it'll also, you know, solve some problems you might be having if the camera's focusing for you and you don't want it to. Well, this is a way to address that, the pre-AF feature. I generally have it turned off, so just to make you guys aware. All right, guys, I just wanted to go over IAF real quick, and by default, it's this center button right here that you can press, and IAF will come on. You can see here, pointing it, it's going right for Layla's eyes. I'm looking at a photo here, and I have the focus point actually set to the center area. You can see here I have it set to center, expandable, flexible spot, and it doesn't matter if I have that mode selected, it'll still find the eye. You see that? So this feature works great. And um, another thing I wanted to show you quickly is you can change where you have that program to if you want. Right here it's set to the center button. See that? You can change that in your custom key settings um, in the menu system here. Right under 2, you can see page 9 of 10. So you can change where, the, where that position is for the AIF. For example, you could put it to like the focus hold button over here on the side of the camera. You can make that your IAF button. Um, any of the custom buttons pretty much can be programmed as that. And some of the others more on the top. You have the C1 and the C2, but those don't really work too good because you need to press the shutter button. So you kind of need it to be a button that you use with your thumb or your other hand. And then you can then hit the shutter release button when the image is sharp. Okay, so that's how you use IAF, and it uh, works quite well. The next thing I wanted to show you was smile and face detection. I currently have that turned off. You can register a face. This is face registration, so you can register a face, like if there's a bunch of kids and you just want the camera to track your kid, you can actually register a face and it will prioritize that face, okay? And then you can also have it uh, smile shutter. So if you're trying to get a picture of a kid and you want the shutter to fire when the kid smiles or something, you can actually turn this feature on and it'll automatically, when it sees the, the person smile, it'll take the shot, ba-boom. So you don't have to worry about timing it yourself. Really great feature and you can go left and right to change the sensitivity of that, okay? Now, face detection on, I'm just going to show you what that does and you can see when I scroll over a face, the box lights up there, see that? And then when you press the focus, it's going to confirm on the face. Now, if you have a bunch of faces in the scene, um, it's not going to know which face you want necessarily unless you register the face. So if you're taking pictures of groups of people, that feature you might want to disable because the depth of field might become a problem if it picks the wrong face, for example. And so in general, you know, it's a great feature, but sometimes I just like to have it, I prefer to have it turned off and I like to choose my focus point. All right, some of you guys might be coming from other camera systems and you really might enjoy the uh, feature called uh, back focus, it's called generally. And basically what that means is normally you press the shutter button halfway and that will focus the camera for you, but you can also have the focus set to a button on the back and then you can just hit the button on the back and it'll focus for you. As you can see here, I have the AEL button custom programmed for focus. All right, so if you want to use just the back focus button and you only want the shutter button to fire and not focus, you have to actually turn that off, all right? The AF with shutter. And the AF with shutter option is right here. It's on camera one, AF one, and it's page five of 14, all right? So tab one, page five of 14, AF with shutter. I'm gonna turn that off. So now when I press the shutter button, it's not focusing, you hear that? I'm not getting the focus confirmation lock. I can take a picture, but I'm not getting that lock. But if I hit the AEL button, now I'm getting the lock. 
So you can lock on and then take the photo that way. And that's called back focusing. Now let me just show you where I changed the other setting. It's in the custom settings option. And if you scroll over here, it's right there. Page 9 of 10, custom key shoot. And you can see here I have, if you go to page 2, AEL button is set to AF on. So that's where you set that setting if you want to set your camera up for back focusing, okay? It's a cool feature and a lot of people have asked me how to do it and that's how you set it up. And it works that way pretty much with all the Sony cameras. You just have to pick a button that you want the back focus, the AF on basically to be. And in this case, I only have really the AEL or the function button to choose from that's like convenient because you also do still need to press the shutter button to take the shot. So it's got to be like a thumb button or you could use like the focus hold button over here if you wanted to. So that's how that works. Alright guys, another feature I wanted to show you was center lock on AF. And that's very similar to the lock on AF that I discussed in my other focus mode video. But this one's a little bit different. Let me show you because you actually get to select it manually. In the other mode it does it automatically. So in this case you're going to turn it on and now you have to basically select what you're going to track. And it's in the center of the screen so I'm just going to click the center button here. And now it's going to decide, see it creates a square that that's what it's going to track, all right? So that's what it was focused on. So now when I move the camera around, see how it's maintaining tracking on that bolt? So you could see it works really good. And if I go off screen and come back, it tries to reattain it and it got it. So it works quite well, all right? Now, this is very similar, however, to the other features. So let me cancel that. Cancel lock on AF, so we're good there. I'll just go in my menu and I'll turn this off. I don't particularly use this feature because if you go into the uh, function menu and you go to the focus areas, you can scroll down and there's a better lock on. You do have to be in AFC mode though for that. So let me switch the camera to AFC mode. So I'm just going to switch that to C, like so, AFC mode. Alright, so I'm just going to hit the function menu and I'm going to go to focus area and lock on AF, you can choose center, flexible spot, and so forth. I'm just going to use center though because I know I'm going to lock on something in the center of my scene. Now this mode's a little bit different. It only works when you have the shutter held down and you have to be in continuous focus mode, but it will maintain lock. So now I have it locked down and look, if I turn the camera, it's maintaining focus on that screw. So if the screw is moving in the scene, it would track it, or if the camera's moving, it'll track it. So it just lost it there. It was doing a pretty good job, but it lost it. So let me try on the dollar this time and see how it does. It's trying its best. It's doing a decent job. Let's try the crayons. All right, it's doing a better job on the crayons. You know, it's not perfect, but it works really well. So if I do it on the face there, it's probably going to have a really easy time with the face because of the facial recognition technology. Yeah, it does a really good job on the face, all right? So that's how that feature works, guys. And it's powerful because you have all the different modes as well. You know, the different areas, rather. Okay, so that's how the lock on AF feature works. All right, guys, the next feature I wanted to show you is the AF area registration. Now, you might be like, what the heck is that? So let me just show you how you got to set this up in the menu first, and then I'll give you a better example. So first, you got to turn AF area register on, all right? Then you got to go into your custom custom settings, rather, the custom key settings. And I have custom 3. So C3 is this button down here, which is the garbage can. You can see you have register AF area hold. That means you have to actually hold the button down in order to get it to work. Um, then you have toggle, which will you basically just have to press the button and it will switch to the registered focus point as opposed to having to hold it. All right. And then you have another one. Register AF area AF on. So let me set it to that one and let me show you how that one works. All right, so let me register a focus point. I'm just going to hold the function key down and register this one. So that's registered. Now I'm going to move my focus point over to the dollar bill and I'll focus it. Now when I press the garbage can, it should go back to my other register, registered AF point. You can see it's over the screw there blinking and it should automatically focus and see it does. So that's awesome. All right, now I can press this button, it'll focus on the dollar bill, press the garbage can, boom, it focuses on that one. And then you, you can toggle between the two really quick, like so. And that, that really is an amazing feature. So it's a little bit more powerful than I even initially thought when I saw those other features there on the menu. So 
check it out. Play with it. Maybe uh, you can find a purpose for it. All right, guys. I really hope you got what you were looking for in this video, and I just wanted to go more in-depth into some of the autofocus features, and there's so many on the Sony cameras, and I don't want to overwhelm you by putting this all in one video. Thanks for checking out this video, and I will catch up with you later. Please feel free to ask questions below, and I will try my best to, you know, answer you or make another video to make it, uh, you know, clarify it better, etc. All right, buddies. Peace.